This is the BMW M6 convertible, and I am a little concerned. I do like performance cars and I do like convertibles, but I'm not so mad about the combination of the two. I hated the previous generation M6, and I'm not the biggest fan of the current 6 Series, although I do love the current M5, with which this car shares its engine and a few other things as well. So, this should be interesting. The rain in Cape Town let up for just long enough for us to allow this second generation M6 in ideal conditions, sun out, top down with dry, clear roads. If you didn't meet when we did the M5, let me introduce you to this mechanical masterpiece. It's BMW's twin power turbo V8 with 412 kilowatts and 680 newton meters. It'll get the M6 from 0 to 100 in 4.3 seconds, from 0 to 200 in 13.1. It's linked to a seven speed dual clutch gearbox and a whole bunch of other mechanical wizardry that lets you enjoy every last drop of power. And with those drops of power come a whole bucket load of enjoyment. This engine is by far the biggest reason to own one of these cars, and BMW knows that, which is why they're offering an optional extra that'll raise the top speed of the M6 to 305 kilometers an hour. The thing is, if you want it to behave like a big, lazy, top-down cruiser, it'll do just that. You won't feel anything from the steering, you won't feel anything from the gearbox, and the mighty engine will just waft you along at whatever speed you choose. But it doesn't take a big stretch of the imagination to realize that this car isn't about wafting. It's about making a noise and attacking corners and using all 412 of those kilowatts to the best effect possible. The thing is, you don't even have to push either one of the two M buttons on the steering wheel. All you do is lean on the accelerator a bit and the whole car feels like it starts to shrink around you. And then when you do start fiddling and tweaking and adjusting, the car responds instantly because everything gets sharper. And because there's no roof, you can let the sun shine in to enjoy the ride and the most spectacular sound. <laughs> Before heading out in an M6, try choose a route that includes a sheer rock face next to the road. Hearing the engine note amplified like that is spine-tingling stuff. The convertible has a clever folding canvas roof, but I would suggest that that's purely for times when the sun becomes unbearable, because the sound never will. This is the only version of the M6 that's available for now. The coupe will be coming later in the year. When one of the BMW South Africa bigwigs handed me the key, he said to me that this car was better than the M5. And at first I thought to myself, how can he speak such sacrilege? But I'm beginning to see his points. The M5 is a very good car. It strikes a good balance between all the roles it has to play. But this car feels more agile, it feels sharper, and it feels more like the car that wants to be driven hard. In short, it's the more fun option. It sets out to be a sports car, not just a very fast version of a lesser car, and it succeeds. Make no mistake though, it's not interested solely in shredding its tires and trying to scare the driver. The interior is fairly standard 6 Series issue with a few extra performance bits. Carbon fiber, of course, a new steering wheel, and the MDCT gear knob. Besides that, the M6 is all about luxury luxury in the white leather and Danish sound system sense. The standard 6 series prides itself on providing standard kit off the top shelf and options from the shelf above that. And the M6 is no different. It's all here, from climate control to sat nav, keyless entry, heated and ventilated seats, online access through BMW connected drive and so on and so on. The M6 makes do with the trademark M pieces to warn you of its ferocious intent. Bumpers with big air dams, quad exhaust tailpipes, 19 inch wheels which you can replace with 20s if you really want. There's no doubt it feels better when you're driving harder, but it does manage to deliver on more traditional cabriolet attributes. It is a head turner, even though the regular 6 series leaves me cold. The interior has a luxury bias, but subtle touches remind you that you're behind the wheel of a true performer.
I was fully expecting to not like the M6. Given my disdain for all things BMW 6 Series, I was expecting this to be a fat, obnoxious convertible with too much power and not enough driving enjoyment. And I was comprehensively wrong. The noise, the power, the drive, and the luxury make this one of the most enjoyable M cars ever. Forget about the sound system, the real music comes from the big V8 and the huge lashings of power it can unleash. The chassis is up to the challenge as well. The result is a big coupe that lives up to the M car ethos, even if the shape remains as large and cumbersome as the standard version.